Okay. So now I'm uh, going to talk about the SGX. Um, Kai did this work, and then actually um, I architected uh, this one. So um, I, I'm speaking for Kai, but I worked with him for enabling. So I'm pretty uh, knowledgeable ab around this one. So First of all, I will introduce quickly the, what the SGX does and what it is, and then followed by how we're gonna uh, enable SGX on them, okay? So what's the purpose of uh, SGX? What, what it really wants to do? So this is a key, key you know, foil, actually. So the point of SGX is don't trust basically hardware. I don't know. <laughs> trust the hardware. Don't trust operating system or even VMM. Okay. Only trust your Uncrave. So you trust the hardware and Uncrave. Un I'll talk about Uncrave more, but it's essentially the link, com link three component within your application, okay? So this way, even OS or VMM are not really malicious, but sometimes, you know, people can use, attacker can use exploits, right? To use OS or VMM to attack application or VMs to steal, you know, sensitive information or data. So that's the reason we have SGX, okay? So far should be clear, right? Okay. So what it actually prevents is uh, whatever the snoop in uh, the bus, memory bus, or the system memory, the uh, memory, and we have a special memory for it, you know, in Uncrave. And within the CPU uh, package, it, the, the data is not encrypted, it's clear, but uh, if you look at the system memory side, it's all encrypted if we use Uncrave. So whatever data uh, transfer in the, 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 the system bus will be basically uh, prevented. Now I'm talking about uh, the Uncrate. <clears throat> so this is a little bit complex, but uh, the idea is uh, simple. So Uncrate is trusted execution environment within the application. So this is uh, one kind of issue with the SGX, but you, you kind of need to uh, modify or refactor application to Uncrate. And in Uncrave, you basically do your secret stuff, right? So if you have uh, sensitive information or doing some of, you know, some of con confidential things, then you create an Uncrave and you do that kind of thing uh, in Uncrave. In Uncrave, you can have a data, ex uh, also the code, and then the stack, okay? Uh, that kind of thing, okay, this one. And there, the, all the data or the code will be, uh, you know, uh, protected by, again, uh, hardware. Even OS or VMM try to see the content, you, you cannot really see, okay? And you have, a, a, you, you can have a multi, you know, th threads there, and then I'll talk about how you're gonna enter the, the Uncrave from application, okay? There is a, a new instruction set for Uncraves, okay? And Uncraves are mapped to special type of a physical memory uh, for encryption, which is called EPC, Uncrave Page Cache, okay? Uh, this one, right, and then uh, this, this is uh, reserved at uh, boot time, 
And then today, on the Skyrack, it's actually already uh, enabled. So for example, some configuration of Windows actually uses SGX already. And typically, the size of EPC is not large, uh, like a 64 megabyte, okay? On the servers, we, you may find more EPC, okay? And we, uh, like I said, we extended the architecture to, to have a um, supervisor level uh, for, for, you know, supervisor and then user mode. Um, this is just a kind of a, a kind of prefix. So there are a lot of uh, operations. For example, create, uh, uncrave, or you know, destroy that kind of thing. Um, so those are new instructions set to handle the uncrave. One thing note about that. Uh, <coughs> Uncrave environment is, even though this is a, you know, link three, we, we wanted to make sure the environment is even safer, okay, more protected. So we prevented some uh, instruction that could be used as an exploit or attack. For example, like CPU ID is not available in Uncrave. Or even more, the system call, uh, sysenter, right? This one, sysenter, Cisco is not actually available because uh, UD, okay? So how can you use, uh, you know, uh, system call? Because, you know, again, we don't trust operating systems. There is no point of doing a system call, right? That's the reason uh, we prevent it. Um, in the SDX1, uh, we even prevented the read TSC because sometimes uh, TSC can be tweaked or, you know, uh, cheated. Uh, for example, like a replay kind of a thing, and then uh, we actually, that was prevented, but uh, because of a strong demand, and then we uh, enabled the uh, uh, read TSC uh, in Uncrave in uh, SGX2, okay. And as you see, the VM exit, so we can actually uh, intercept um, to, uh, SGX instruction for supervisor, okay. Uh, okay, probably I should talk about the exit and interrupt. So, even when you get VM exit, um, register contents or the, even the VMCS are saved into the uncrate, okay? And register state are not really visible to even the VMM OS, okay? So when the OS or VMMs look at the register value, okay, they are actually synthetic, basically zero, okay? So the VMM or OS uh, have no clue with, uh, about the contents of the register. And when the, the for example, VM entry, you know, resume happens, uh, then the processor basically restore the state from Uncrave. Again, that's uh, encrypted area, right? Then uh, back to the Uncrave. But in, for that, in that case, the hardware, does, the software doesn't do, doesn't need to do anything. It just, from a, a VMM hypervisor's point of view, you just see the VM exit and some reason. For example, we need to take care of uh, EPT violation, actually. And in that case, you get only the necessary information to handle the EPT violation. But you don't see that the register contents at that time. So this is a software flow. How do you enter the uh, encrypt? Okay. Um, there's an instruction to enter here. You basically create uh, the encrypt, and then 
you call this one, and then basically which uh, does is uh, you, you need to have a driver, a SGX driver in the operating system. And then what the SGX driver does is basically map the Enclave uh, virtual address to real Enclave uh, EPC. That's what the SGX driver does. Then once the uh, process uh, enters the enclave, it's just uh, you know, kind of visible from uh, OS or hypervisor's point of view, and then just return. You could have uh, some shared memory. For example, uh, you pro give uh, some uh, you know, uh, data to this one. But again, you don't trust the operating system. So whenever you, whenever you pass information, uh, you probably need to encrypt or you know, do something. Okay. Inside Enclave, again, you can do a secret thing uh, with uh, you know, uh, being uh, uh, monitored by the uh, other entity like o OS or BMM. Um, one thing I should note is, uh, you know, in general, modifying application is not really easy, right? It's not really sustainable because uh, you, if you need a SGX, you look at all the application and then modify them. That's not uh, sometimes, a, you know, a scalable approach. So there are some uh, uh, kind of research project uh, where they run, for example, container, the entire container uh, in Enclave. Okay. In that case, you don't need to modify the applications there. And what the infrastructure does is basically uh, create a huge Enclave and enter the entry point and where then it start running those application entirely in the Enclave, okay? But like you saw, for example, system call are not available. So upon a system call, it generate, for example, UD, right? So you, the OS need to intercept the UD and the infrastructure, the, the framework needs to do some system call for that enclave, and then return back the, the result back to the uh, enclave, I mean, in this container. So, uh, so you don't necessarily to modify all the applications to enable SGX, right? Like I said, you can have some infrastructure to run container, entire container uh, within uh, enclave, okay? That's uh, kind of happening today. Now, so how are we going to enable SGX in uh, uh, Zen? Okay. Some part is straightforward. It's essentially, you, 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 know, you advertise SGX using uh, CPU ID and MSR, the, some, uh, the SGX uh, specific MSR. Uh, then EPT, what you need to do in uh, the Zen side is in the EPT, you just simply point to the uh, EPC page. That's it, okay? You don't need to do anything special for that part. So uh, up to this point, it should be straightforward and you, you get the, you, when you get the VM exit, uh, again, like uh, for example, the inter interrupt or whatever, then uh, it just, uh, you know, no more VM exit. Although the contents are modified, tweaked by the, uh, the hardware, like I said, it's a synthesized uh, VM exit. So all the values are basically, uh, you know, hidden, fake, right? It's zero. Only thing is, for example, VM exit reason will be, uh, uh, of course, valid. Now the tricky, it's not very tricky, but uh, the challenge, only challenge is uh, EPC by 
virtualization. Like I said, EPC is limited. So on the native side, where you have only basically only one operating system, so if we have an application, probably uh, you can have uh, probably sufficient uh, EPC, but on virtualization where you have uh, more than one VMs, then you have a more, you could have a more demand for the EPC, right? So there are ways to, uh, it's not really virtualized, but how you're gonna, uh, pro you know, uh, provide EPC to guests, okay? So there are, we have uh, three options, and then actually we did a POC for all, all of them, okay? Oh, and then one thing, I think I will cover this one. Uh, the, there is a v new VM exit, and I'll talk about the more the options on data. Okay. We're uh, already at time, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so this is a very quick uh, view of uh, architecture, right? So you have uh, EPC here. Uh, Yeah, EPC and then uh, hypervisor need to uh, basically per either partition or uh, over subscription or use a ballooning for EPC. And those are the options. Okay, so static, it should be easy. But, uh, it's limited, right, because the total amount of EPC is uh, same as, uh, you know, uh, platform ballooning and over subscription. And I don't think uh, I, I can talk about the, uh, the details of this one. Uh, I think I want to talk about that, the design session, how complex, how we're doing here. But I just want to show the options for the EPC virtualization. Okay. So with that, I think uh, <coughs> I'll like to take uh, questions if I have a time. I don't think we have any time for this. So again, there is a design discussion this afternoon okay. scheduled for this. That's fine.